Okay, so we're gonna play a game called How Fast Can I Film, Edit, and Upload This Video to ensure that it actually goes up before Book of the Month releases their July books. Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam, my name is Brittany, welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I'm here to do my book of the month predictions for the month of July. I had every intention of getting this video up for you a little bit earlier in the month, but June has been kind of chaotic between starting work at the Humane Society every Sunday, which has severely lessened my ability to film, and then going on vacation for a week and a half where I basically couldn't edit at all. I am falling severely behind on my videos, not to mention I came back from that cruise with tonsillitis and I'm still kind of recovering, so if my voice is raspy or low or whatever that is because I'm still kind of recovering but we're here we're filming we're doing what we got to do so this is my second attempt at doing book of the month predictions I was very hopeful for June because there were a lot of amazing releases coming out in June and book of the month to be quite blunt really shit the bed with regard to the selections that they made in my opinion I actually skipped the month of June which I was not expecting at all because I feel like they overlooked some of the most amazing releases that were coming out so we're gonna see how they do in July I actually have a feeling that it's going to be quite a big box for me and I'll tell you why in just a second. But first, just to reiterate, I am doing this completely for fun. I have no idea what book of the month is going to select each and every month. I find that they're pretty unpredictable because just when you think that you know what they're going to choose, like with repeat authors and stuff, they don't or they completely stop carrying an author altogether. You just really have no idea what they are going to do. So I have five categories of books to talk to you about and I'm limiting myself to five books for each category. Some of these categories I don't even have five for, so we're just going to kind of run through them. Before we get into July's books, I did want to let you all know that it has already been confirmed that Book of the Month will have the new Ellie Hazelwood called Love Theoretically as well as the new Riley Sager called The Only One Left available as add-ons in July and that's why I say that I'm pretty sure that July is going to be a pretty heavy book month for me because I already have those two add-ons in my card. Book of the Month now allows you to have four add-ons along with your monthly book selection so you can get up to five books in your box every single month and I have a feeling that this is going to be a full box. So let's go ahead and jump into some of my predictions for the month of July starting with the mystery thriller horror category. Now the first one I'm going to talk to you about today is actually an August release. We're going to have the opportunity to get our hands on it early via book of the month and it is called Dark Corners by Megan Golden. Now typically I don't go into early releases for these videos because that just opens the pool too wide for me to select from. So I try to stick to July releases when I'm selecting these predictions. The only reason why I'm including the Megan Golden book in here now is because of all of the clues that book of the month has released over the past couple of weeks. Pretty much firm leads us all to believe that it is going to be this Megan Golden book. They did feature the Night Swim as a monthly selection in 2020, I believe it was, and Dark Corners follows the same main character who is a podcaster. It is a true crime podcast and she has helped exonerate innocent people and I believe in this book she's being asked by the FBI to help with a case. Terrence Bailey is about to be released from prison for breaking and entering, though investigators have long suspected him in the murders of six women. As his freedom approaches, Bailey gets a surprise visit from Madison Logan, a hot young influencer with a huge social media following. Hours later, Madison disappears and police suspect she's been kidnapped or worse. Is Madison's disappearance connected to her visit to Bailey? Why was she visiting him in the first place? When they hit a wall in the investigation, the FBI reluctantly asks for Rachel's help in finding the missing influencer. Madison seems only to exist on social media. She has no family, no friends, and other than in her posts, most people have never seen her. So who is she really? Using a fake Instagram account, Rachel Crawl goes undercover to BuzzCon, a popular influencer conference where she discovers a world of fierce rivalry that may have turned lethal. And that's all I'm going to say about that. This sounds really interesting. I did very much enjoy my time with The Night Swim and so I will be very excited to see Dark Corners as a selection in July. And so if it is truly the selection, I already have three out of five books selected for the month of July. So like I said, it's going to be a big month. Another candidate for this category is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia. Her book Mexican Gothic has been featured before. I can't remember offhand whether they have featured any of her other books, but her newest release is coming out in July and so it is another strong contender. I have never read a Silvia Moreno Garcia so I don't really know what her capabilities are but I know that a lot of people really enjoy her works. Just to briefly read this blurb it says from the best-selling author of The Daughters of Dr. Moreau and Mexican Gothic comes a fabulous meld of Mexican horror movies and Nazi occultism. A dark thriller about the curse that haunts a legendary lost film and awakens one woman's hidden powers. Sounds a little unusual definitely not my thing it's not something I would be picking up but if you are a fan of Silvia Moreno Garcia she could definitely be a strong contender for for the 
this category in July. Next, I actually have a debut. It's called The Woods Are Waiting by Katherine Green. This says, Cheyenne Ashby knows the dark and disturbing history of her hometown of Blue Cliff, Virginia all too well. It's why she left. Growing up deep within the woods with her eccentric mother, Constance, she was raised on the unusual customs and generational superstitions linked to the local legend of an evil entity that haunts the forest. Five years ago, the bodies of three children were found in the woods. It was a man, not a mythical beast, named Jasper Clinton, who was convicted of these heinous crimes. For five years, the town breathed just a bit easier with a real-life monster behind bars. But when another child goes missing, Cheyenne and Natalie are determined to discover the truth and uncover the town's dangerous secrets rooted in its terrifying past. The two women must confront the reality of the superstitions they always believed in and their town's complicated connection with who or what lives in the woods. So it sounds like this could be one that borders on the speculative or makes you think that it's going to be a speculative book but could ultimately be just like an average mundane human issue. I don't know. It sounds kind of interesting. I'm not 100% sold on it but this one is kind of getting a little bit of buzz so I do think that it could be on Book of the Month's radar for July. And the final book for this category that I'm going to mention is another debut. It is called Her Little Flowers by Shannon Morgan. This sounds like it could be a haunted house-ish kind of book. It says Francine Thwaite has lived all her 55 years in her family's ancestral home, a rambling Elizabethan manor in England's Lake District. No other living soul resides there, but Francine isn't alone. There are ghosts in Thwaite Manor, harmless and familiar. Most beloved is Brie, the mischievous ghost girl who has been Francine's companion since childhood. When Francine's estranged sister Madeline returns to the manor after years away, she brings with her a story that threatens everything Francine has always believed. It is a tale of cruelty and desperation, of terror and unbearable heartache. And as Francine learns more about the darkness in her family's past and the role she may have played in it, she realizes that confronting the truth may mean losing what she holds most dear. So that one's a little bit vague, but again, this is one that I have seen going around. I've seen it mentioned a few times, and so that leads me to believe that this is another one that could be on Book of the Month's radar for the month of July. All right, moving on into romance, I really only have two that I want to talk to you about today, and both are because they are going to be repeat authors should Book of the Month decide to feature them in their monthly selections. The first is Catherine Center's new release, Hello Stranger. She has been featured multiple times in the past on Book of the Month, and so it is absolutely not outside the realm of possibility that Book of the Month would once again feature her in July or at least have her book as an add-on. This is following our main character, Sadie Montgomery. A one minute she's celebrating the biggest achievement of her life, placing as a finalist in the North American Portrait Society competition. The next, she's lying in a hospital bed, diagnosed with a probably temporary condition known as face blindness. She can see, but every face she looks at is now a jumbled puzzle of disconnected features. But as she struggles to cope, hang on to her artistic dream, work through major family issues, and take care of her beloved dog, Peanut, she falls into love, lust, a temporary obsession to distract from the real life problems in her life, with not one man, but two very different ones. The timing couldn't be worse. If only her life were a little more in focus, Sadie might be able to find her way, but perceiving anything clearly right now seems impossible. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a cute rom-com kind of love triangle type of thing. I'm not really sure. Doesn't personally ring any bells for me. I've read one other Catherine Center and I didn't love it so I haven't read anything since and I wouldn't be picking this one up but I do think again it is a strong contender for a July featured selection or add-on. And then the other repeat author that could be featured is Sarah Desai. Her newest release to have into heist is coming out in July and so there is another possibility that she could be featured once again. This really quick blurb says to exonerate her best friend one woman must mastermind a jewelry heist during the wedding of the season in this hilarious romantic comedy caper from the author of The Dating Plan. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be fun, fast paced, a little bit silly at times. And if you really enjoyed The Dating Plan, you might want to be on the lookout in July for this one as a book of the month selection. Moving on into the literary slash contemporary fiction category, I only have three for this one as well. There are definitely a lot more that are coming out that I could have chosen, but these are probably the three top ones based on the buzz that they are getting and what I have heard. So we're going to stick with these. The first one is called The Librarianist by Patrick DeWitt. This follows Bob Comet. He is a retired librarian passing his solitary days surrounded by books and small comforts in a mint colored house in Portland, Oregon. One morning on his daily walk, he encounters a confused elderly woman lost in a market and returns her to the senior center that is her home. Hoping to fill the void he's known since retiring, he begins volunteering at the center. Here, as a community of strange peers gathers around Bob and following a happenstance brush with a painful complication from his past, the events of his life and the details of his character are revealed. Behind Bob Comet's straight man facade is the story of an unhappy child's runaway adventure during the last days of the Second World War, of true love won and stolen away, of the purpose and pride found in the librarian's vocation, and of the pleasures of a life lived to the side of the masses. Bob's experiences are imbued with melancholy but also a bright sustained comedy. He has a talent for locating bizarre and outsized players to welcome onto the stage of his life. With his inimitable verb, skewed humor, and compassion for the outcast, Patrick DeWitt has written a wide-ranging and ambitious document of the introvert's condition. So I actually just thought that that sounded really sweet and really heartwarming. It sounds like it's going to be a character study of Bob Comet and what he's gone through in his life and what he 
is currently going through in his life. Sounds like he's trying to create another community for himself and it looks like he's going to be kind of surrounded by this wacky cast of characters. So I'm getting the impression that it's going to be very touching, very heartwarming, but also silly and joyous as well. I will say that it's not getting the best reviews on Goodreads. It's got like a 3.71 right now, but it could be one to watch out for in July for Book of the Month. Another one that is definitely getting some buzz and could be a strong contender for July is Crook Manifesto by Colson Whitehead. This is the second book in his Ray Carney series. I believe the first book was the Harlem Shuffle. I hear a lot of people are really hoping that this will be a book of the month selection. I personally have never read a Colson Whitehead. I don't know anything about the Harlem Shuffle or what it is about, but it sounds like it's set in 1970s New York. It's 1971, trash piles up on the streets, crime is at an all-time high, the city is careening towards bankruptcy, and a shooting war has broken out between the NYPD and the Black Liberation Army. Amidst this collective nervous breakdown, furniture store owner and ex-fence, Ray Carney tries to keep his head down and his business thriving. His days moving stolen goods around the city are over. It's strictly the straight and narrow for him until he needs Jackson 5 tickets for his daughter May, and he decides to hit up his old police contact Munson, fixer extraordinaire. But Munson has his own favors to ask of Carney, and staying out of the game gets a lot more complicated and deadly, okay? So it sounds like there could be some police corruption going on here. 1973. The counterculture has created a new generation. The old ways are being overthrown, but there is one constant, Pepper, Carney's endearingly violent partner in crime. It's getting harder to put together a reliable crew for hijackings, heists, and assorted felonies, so Pepper takes on a side gig doing security on a black exploitation shoot in Harlem. He finds himself in a freaky world of Hollywood stars, up-and-coming comedians, and celebrity drug dealers, in addition to the usual cast of hustlers, mobsters, and hitmen. These adversaries underestimate the seasoned crook to their regret. 1976. Harlem is burning block by block while the whole country is gearing up for bicentennial celebrations. Carney is trying to come up with a July 4th ad he can live with, while his wife Elizabeth is campaigning for her childhood friend, the former assistant DA and rising politician Alexander Oakes. When a fire severely injures one of Carney's tenants, he enlists Pepper to look into who may be behind it. Our crooked duo have to battle their way through a crumbling metropolis run by the shady, the violent, and the utterly corrupted. So there are definitely multiple timelines going on in this, and they're all going to connect in one way or another. Like I said, I've never read a Colson Whitehead before, so I'm not entirely sure of his capabilities as a storyteller or what you're likely going to be expecting from this story, but definitely keep an eye out for this one in July from Book of the Month. And then the last one in this category I'm going to talk about is One Summer in Savannah by Tara Shelton Harris. This sounds like it could be a little bit of a family drama. It's been eight years since Sarah Lancaster left her home in Savannah, Georgia. Eight years since her daughter Elena came into the world following a terrifying sexual assault that left deep emotional wounds Sarah would do anything to forget. But when Sarah's father falls ill, she's forced to return home and face the ghosts of her past. Okay, so we have a reluctant return home trope here. While caring for her father and running his bookstore, Sarah is desperate to protect her curious, outgoing, genius daughter from the Wilers, the family of the man who assaulted her. Sarah thinks she can succeed. Her attacker is in prison. His identical twin brother, Jacob, left town years ago, and their mother are all unaware Elena exists. But she soon learns that Jacob has also just returned to Savannah to piece together the fragments of his once great family. And when their two worlds collide, the type of force Sarah explores in her poetry and Jacob in his astrophysics, they are drawn together in unexpected ways. Okay, so it sounds like there could be a little bit of an interesting romance going on there with the main character and the brother of her rapist. This is another one that has been going around. I have been seeing it a lot. And so I wanted to go ahead and mention it here because it is getting a lot of buzz. All right, moving on into historical fiction, starting with The Sunset Crowd by Karen. Karen Tanabe. So this is set in 1970s Los Angeles, so the vibes of this are definitely very reminiscent of Daisy Jones and the Six, maybe even a little bit of Malibu Rising. We are following several characters, starting with Ivra Scott, who is an LA darling, the daughter of an Oscar-winning director and a Brazilian bombshell actress. She is the city's style queen. By day, she's at the helm of Sunset on Sunset, the store beloved by Hollywood's young and beautiful. By night, she's on the arm of Kai De La Fer, the screenwriter of the moment. Then we're following Theodora Lee, the 20-something Paramount assistant who looks like a big screen star, but her sights are firmly set behind the scenes as she fights to become a movie producer in a town where sex and sexism is all. Theodora's got the talent and instincts, but she's not willing to wait. Luckily, getting ahead by any means necessary is LA's mantra. Observing it all is B. DuPont, a photographer for Rolling Stone and Vogue, who never misses the party, but always keeps to its fringes. A Manhattan blue blood turned West Coast bohemian, B. holds Ivra's sunset crowd together. She's also Kai's oldest friend, and she's harbored a not-so-secret flame for him since they met at an elite Swiss boarding school. But in Hollywood, no one stays on top forever, and it's not long before Theodora's unrelenting ambition sets in motion a dramatic quest for power in an industry that is as glamorous as it is duplicitous. From Rodea Drive to the French Riviera, the Sunset Crowd is a tale of survival and reinvention, of faking it until you make it, and the glittering appeal of success and stardom as it seeks to answer that timeless question, who gets to have the American dream? All right, so that's one to keep an eye on. Again, this is another one that is not getting great reviews. It has got a 3.63 rating on Goodreads, so not stellar so far, but again, this is another one that is going around. It seems to be a buzz.
buzzed historical fiction and it's giving similar vibes to a lot of books that Book of the Month have featured in the past. So this is another one I would not be shocked to see as a featured book in July. All right and the last one here for historical fiction is going to be Alchemy of a Blackbird by Claire McMillan. It sounds like this is set in World War II potentially. It is a mystical historical novel based on the true story of the 20th century painters and occultists Remedios Varro and Leonora Carrington. All right so that's definitely something I've never seen covered before. Desperate to escape the Nazis, painter Remedios Varro and her lover poet Benjamin Paré flee Paris for Villa Herbel, a safe house for artists on the Riviera. Along with Max Ernst, Peggy Guggenheim and others, the two anxiously await for exit papers. As the months pass, Remedios begins to sense that the others don't see her as a fellow artist. They have cast her in the stifling role of a surrealist ideal, the beautiful innocent. She finds a refuge in a mysterious bookshop where she stumbles into a world of occult learning and intensifies an esoteric practice in the tarot that helps her light the bright fire of her creative genius. When travel documents come through, Remedios and Benjamin flee to Mexico where she is reunited with friend and fellow painter Leonora Carrington. Together the women tap their creativity, stake their independence, and each find their true loves. But it is the tarot that enables them to access the transcendent that lies on the other side of consciousness to become the truest surrealists of all. This is about a dynamic female friendship that becomes a historic artistic collaboration between two giants of the art world. All right, so this is historical fiction with a somewhat speculative twist. So if that sounds of interest to you, go ahead and keep your eye out for it in July. All right, and the very final category I'm going to talk to you about today are fantasy and sci-fi. And I actually have a handful of books to talk to you about today that are coming out in July that could be featured under the fantasy or sci-fi category for Book of the Month. The first one, starting with The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. It follows Reina, who is stuck living on the edges of her society. Her only salvation lies in an invitation from a grandmother she's never known. The journey is dangerous and prayer can't always avert disaster. Attacked by creatures that stalk the region, Reina is on the verge of death until her grandmother, a dark sorceress, intervenes. Now dependent on the Dona's magic for her life, Reina will do anything to earn and keep her favor, even the bidding of an ancient god who whispers to her in the night. Eva Caser is unwanted. Illegitimate and of mixed heritage, Eva is her family's shame. She tries her best to be perfect and to hide her oddity, but Eva is hiding a secret. Magic calls to her. Eva knows she should fight the temptation. Magic is the sign of the dark god and using it is punishable by death. Yet it's hard to deny power when it has always been denied to you. Eva is walking a dangerous path, one that gets stranger every day, and in the end she'll become something she never imagined. So I believe that this is a debut fantasy and if this sounds of interest to you, be on the lookout for it in July. An interesting sci-fi slash thriller that is coming out in July called The Deep Sky by Yumi Kitase. It's about a mission into deep space that begins with a lethal explosion that leaves the survivors questioning the loyalty of the crew. It's the eve of Earth's environmental collapse. A single ship carries humanity's last hope. 80 elite graduates of a competitive program who will give birth to a generation of children in deep space. But halfway to a distant but livable planet, a lethal bomb kills three of the crew and knocks the phoenix off course. Asuka, the only surviving witness, is an immediate suspect. Asuka already felt like an imposter before the explosion. She was the last picked for the mission. She struggled during training back on Earth, and she was chosen to represent Japan, a country she only partly knows as a half-Japanese girl raised in America. But estranged from her mother back home, the phoenix is all she has left. Crew turning on each other, Asuka is determined to find the culprit before they all lose faith in the mission, or worse, the bomber strikes again. That actually sounds really fascinating, really fast-paced. I'm getting more and more into science fiction. I recently read The Martian, which was also another space kind of survival story, and so this one would actually catch my attention. So I'm interested to see if it does, in fact, feature as a Book of the Month selection or as an add-on. I also believe that Chloe Gong's adult fantasy debut called Immortal Longings could be featured. Her young adult books have been featured on Book of the Month in the past. She would not only be a repeat author, but I think that this would be kind of enticing to Book of the Month to feature her in her adult fantasy debut. And it actually sounds like this is Shakespeare inspired, which is interesting. Every year, thousands in the Kingdom of Talon will flock to its capital Twin Cities, where the palace hosts a set of games. For those confident enough in their ability to jump between bodies, competitors across San Air fight to the death to win unimaginable riches. Okay, there's a competition aspect here. Princess Kala lurks in hiding. Five years ago, a massacre killed her parents and left the Palace of Air empty, and she was the one who did it. Before King Kasa's forces in San can catch her, she plans to finish the job and bring down the monarchy. Her reclusive uncle always greets the victor of the games, so if she wins, she gets her opportunity at last to kill him. Enter Anton Makusa, an exiled aristocrat. His childhood love has lain in a coma since they were both ousted from the palace, and he's deep in debt trying to keep her alive. Thankfully, he's one of the best jumpers in the kingdom, flitting from body to body at will. His last chance at saving her is entering the games and winning. Kala finds both an unexpected alliance with Anton and help from King Casa's adopted son, August, who wants to mend Talon's ills. But the three of them have very different goals, even as Kala and Anton's partnership spirals into something all-consuming. Before the games close, Kala must decide what she's playing for, her lover or her kingdom. So if you have read Chloe Gong in the past and this sounds appealing to you, definitely, definitely be on the lookout for this in July. 
July because I do think that this is a strong contender for a July book of the month fantasy sci-fi selection. And the very last book that I'm going to mention in this video is one that I'm mentioning strictly because I'm seeing it all over the place and it's getting a lot of buzz. It sounds a little bit weird for my taste but it could be completely up your alley. It is called Write by Sarah Rose Etter. A year into her dream job at a cutthroat Silicon Valley startup, Cassie finds herself trapped in a corporate nightmare. In addition to the long hours, toxic bosses, and unethical projects, she struggles to reconcile the glittering promise of a city where obscene wealth lives alongside abject poverty. Though isolated, Cassie is never alone. From her earliest memory, a miniature black hole has been her constant companion. It feeds on her depression and anxiety, its size changing in relation to her distress. The black hole watches, but it also waits. Its relentless pull draws Cassie ever closer as the world around her unravels. When her CEO's demands cross an illegal threshold and she ends up unexpectedly pregnant, Cassie must decide whether the tempting fruits of Silicon Valley are really worth it. Sharp but vulnerable, funny yet unsettling, Wright portrays one millennial woman's journey through a late capitalist hellscape and offers an incisive look at the absurdities of modern life. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a lot of social commentary, which is definitely not my thing, but this is one to keep your eye out for in July if it sounds interesting to you. All right, y'all, there you have it. Those are some of my top contenders for books that could be featured as a monthly selection or add-on selection for July's Book of the Month books. I'm excited for July 1st to roll around so that I can see what was actually chosen. And like I said, I'm expecting a pretty full box this time around, which I'm very happy for since I had to unexpectedly skip June. Please comment down below and let me know if you think that there are any books here that I didn't mention that you feel are very strong contenders for July Book of the Month. Like I said, there are always a ton of releases coming out and I kind of have to whittle it down and pick and choose kind of based on what I'm hearing a lot of buzz about, based on clues given from Book of the Month and things like that. So we're going to see. All right, that's going to be it for me for this video. As always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.